Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ina and I'm here today to report when Phelanopsis with you and also talk about a few common problems that we can find and we can personally go through when we're growing these plants. Before I start reporting this plant, I just want to let you know what's going on here. There is something that's very common when we buy Phelanopsis or when you have them in your home that suddenly you look at the leaves and the leaves they look slimpy which that means is that the plant is dehydrated Thelanopsis are monopodial what that means that means that they have a central axis the plant will grow creating new leaves one after another one so when we look to other type of orchids for example uh, we have here something that we call pseudobulbs. So the plant creates new structures, new pseudobulb each time. So that's the different pattern of growth. So these ones are symposials. However, Phelanopsis don't grow like that. So their way of growing is similar to other types of orchids like Vandas, for example. They are monopodial. Or what that means, that means that they will have a central axis and will create one leaf after another one. They don't have a structure that stored water, as I show you in the other orchid, it has these pseudobulbs, uh, and that's the place where the plants store water and store nutrients. But with Phelanopsis, uh, it will store water in their roots. That's why usually Phelanopsis has like thick roots. And also uh, it will store some water in their leaves. Talking about that, so when the leaf, the leaves are limpy, floppy like that, it means that don't have enough water. The plant is dehydrated. So when you see something like this, the first thing that you have to do, if you came from the supermarket with an orchid that is looking like that, offer some water. Fill in the pot, the decorative pot with water, place your phalaenopsis there and let it be there for, let's say around 10 to 15 minutes. And then you remove that and throw the water away. If you notice in the following day that the, the leaves are becoming more vivid, I would say like harder, it means that it has enough roots to hydrate the plant. In this case here, my leaves are very limpy. As you can see, they are floppy. These are not a new orchid. I have that for more than a year. Uh, it was in bloom. I bloomed that in the last video that I post about my plants in bloom. I will link it down, I think up here and also in the comments down below, uh, on the description of the video, sorry. So what I noticed, when I look at the blooms, that the blooms were much smaller than before, uh, which, okay, it's cold in here, so Phelanopsis blooms, they change according to the temperature as well, but I also think that this plant is not absorbing enough nutrients to feed the plant. Probably it's a root system problem. How I know that? Because the leaves, it has leaves, it doesn't have any other problem, visible problem that I can see. So what I think, what I suspect is that we have a root rot problem here. So probably most of the roots inside this spot, they are dead and I have to report this plant. We have one area root that I have to take really good care of and I have to hydrate this area root in order to hydrate the whole plant. Why the roots rot inside this spot? That's a very good question, but I have a few assumptions. I think that's <laughs> probably only. So two years ago, I bought a huge pack of bark. It wasn't a good bark. The bark uh, degraded very, very easy. And I suspect it affected the roots of some of my plants. It was absorbing more water because uh, it was like old bark. So that's what I suspect happened. And now the medium here is like one year old it wouldn't be enough, it, was, uh, it wouldn't be uh, too bad if the medium was good, of good quality, but it's a terrible quality. So something that I advise you, if you decided to go and uh, if you have many plants, look for better materials or buy a small package and try it. Don't pot a lot of plants on that if you aren't sure. I have done that, I put a lot of plants in this medium, this bad medium. Uh, I had to report most of them. So in the end, I spent more money than if I decided to go with a more expensive bark. 
anyway i will leave also a link down below with some suppliers of bark in the uk uh the ones that i've tried and that i like i'm not earning anything <laughs> I'm just, uh, maybe it can help you to find bark and moss in here. I use organic medium, so I will leave some names of suppliers down below if you want to check and see what you think. If you are new to orchids and maybe don't know where to buy material here, substrate in the UK, so maybe it can help you. For me, it took me a while. I had to research and try one and another one and another one. So I will leave uh, some links down below for you if you'd like to, to buy uh, medium here. Okay. Without further ado, let's report this Phalaenopsis and I'm going to show you what I do about it. So guys, I have here a black tray that I will use to place all the old uh, substrate. I will squeeze my pot gently in case I have some live roots in here. I'm not sure if I have any live roots, but that's what I'm going to do. You squeeze gently and you remove the median. I can see, look, oh gosh, it's really bad. All right, the medium is not as bad as I thought, but the roots are all bad. I don't know if you can see, but they are all bad. And now a way for me to know that is because when you touch the root, it's papery. Look, the velamen that covers the root is thin. And if you touch it, look at that, it will just come out. Can you see that? That means that these roots, they are all dead. Uh, and it's pretty clear that they are all dead. So that's why my plant was so dehydrated. So I have my scissors. I will cut all the dead roots. That's all of them that they have development are pretty thin and look like papery. Just remove all of them. You cut all of them. That's what you should do with the new phalaenopsis as well. You check the root system and check if the root is alive or not. If it's not alive, you can safely cut, cut them. But if they are alive, please don't cut your roots. Okay, they, are, they are necessary for the plant to grow healthy and uh, it's one of the main structure of your plant. So please don't cut roots that are alive. To be honest, I don't think this one is dead as well. This one is pretty strange. I don't know if you can see from so far, but uh, this root doesn't look healthy, but I will keep it and I will keep this one as well because I don't have enough roots for this plant. So I will keep two roots and the area root here. Okay, so that's the first thing that you must do when you are repotting your plant. So just cut all the dead roots. Uh, I'm not gonna clean with hydrogen peroxide or anything because it's an old uh, orchid. I know it doesn't have any pests, so I will just repot it now. It was on this pot here. I will use the same one since you know it didn't have to grow the pot or anything else. I think it will be enough for hopefully the next two years. So I'm gonna clean these. Uh, I'm gonna throw these away and then I'm gonna come back with uh, the pot and also some bark and sphagnum moss to repot this plant. Okay, one second. Hi guys, so I'm back. I have here my Phalaenopsis, my poor baby that doesn't have many roots. Hopefully now that springtime, so warmer months are coming through, so it will push through some new roots and new leaves and we will be healthy again. Because I love these ones, I have no ID but it has beautiful bordeaux purple flowers. It looks a lot like some polykylos uh, type phalaenopsis. Uh, and I found it locally in a garden center. So, and in the UK, it's really rare for us to find different things around. So that's one of the reasons why I really, really love this one. Anyway, I will show you how I report phalaenopsis. I have it here on my tray. I hopefully you can see it a little bit better. This one is a 12 centimeters pot, by the way. I'm doing a mess. Amazing. Sorry about that. So the first thing that I do is with all of my plants, I just put a layer of moss on the bottom. Because I live in London and it's quite cool 
for more than half a year. I tend to put less moss when I'm dealing with Phalaenopsis and some cut layers as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one more bark than moss. Um, because I think one of the reasons why I kill the roots of this one is because of the amount of moss that I had in the pot. So it could be root rot, probably it was wet for too long and suffocated the roots and that's on me because I didn't take good care of the way of the balance of air and it was cold as well, so I think it was temperature with water, not because it was wet, but it was wet and cold at the same time, that's what I think. Again, I'm not a specialist, so I learn things as I go and I'm reading lots of different things as well, so maybe it can help you. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of moss, but not not much. Let's see if it will fit in here. Yeah, it will. Again, it's just a few strands of moss, so I'm not gonna place more than that. layer of moss again just a few strands of moss uh, it's enough to hold some humidity but not too much now I'm gonna place some slow release fertilizer again just a few beads This one is a very cheap one, I mentioned in another video, but I also link them this down below for you if it helps you to find these things across the UK. Because again, we don't have so many suppliers, I think, for things to come through here sometimes takes a while, so I will list some of the local suppliers that we have and I hope it can help you if you're starting growing orchids now. We are almost done. Now I'm gonna use uh, maybe some bamboo scroll or any other thing, thing that you can use to poke the medium through the pot, just to make them to all the bark to fill all of the air pots. So not idea as well is sometimes just to squeeze the pot a little bit to make everything to go through. Let me try to find something to just adjust the medium in here. I'm going to show you how I do it. Then the last thing is I'm going to give you a good water. I usually water them uh, as soon as I finish reporting and that's it. So one second. So as I said before, again, I'm going to just use these three things to make sure I don't have many air pockets across the pot, but uh, I use just a few strains of New Zealand sphagnum moss, but nothing much because again, uh, my climate goes more towards the cool side than the warmer side. So I need to be careful with uh, root rot, especially because these plants, they come from tropical countries. If I offer them too much water with a very, very cool environment, that's not good, you know. Uh, I don't need that good for any plant. You need to have a balance between air, temperature, and humidity. This is very, very important. At least that's what I learn and that's what I've seen with my own experience. Anyway, I will give this plant some water and I will come back when I'm done. One second. Hi guys, so yes, uh, I finished repotting my phalaenopsis and also I gave it uh, I gave it some water I place it uh, in one of my shelvings uh, under my growing lights what I'm gonna do from now on is I'll have to bathe it a little bit especially because it doesn't have many roots I have to take very good care of this area root here because it can uh, help the plant to survive 
it can definitely hydrate the plant a little bit. So I will keep an eye on it because that's one plant that I really, really like. And the, what I, I could tell you is, I think it was my fault. So it was a problem of root rot. We have addressed it now. Uh, hopefully it will push new roots and new leaves and that we're gonna have a much healthier plant in the next season. So it was a good idea to cut the flower spike. So I think in the video I mentioned in the one about my blooms that I will cut this flower spike and I have done that. So it was a good idea because uh, so the plant will save energy. That's another tip that I have to give you. If your plants are not healthy, if you see that they are very dehydrated and then you are giving them water and nothing is happening, the leaves are too limpy uh, as I showed you. So that's a sign of dehydration and there is some problem with your plant. So cut the flower spike because uh, it will be producing new flower spike in next season, but the plant will have more energy, so it will save energy to grow more and it will definitely give you more blooms in the future, that's for sure. And I think one of the things that I like about my plants that they teach me too much. We have to be patient, you know, uh, and it's not only about blooms. For me, it's more about the journey with them. It's learning how to take good care of them. It's to see the new leaves coming, uh, and new roots, and see that you are doing a good job, that they are surviving. So I think for me, it's really interesting to learn a little bit as I go, because these are uh, living things. We learn a lot with them. Anyway, enough blab, <laughs> I'm digressing a lot, but that's are the tips that I would give you. Observe your plant, it will tell you a uh, lot of things. That's all, I hope you have enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below, I'd love to hear more from you, uh, and also subscribe to my channel, it helps me a lot. I hope you have enjoyed it, and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye!